Hey there, and welcome to another trip report. Today's flight is a short hop over to Toronto, but I'll be doing it on one of Air Canada's Boeing 777-300ERs in their business class cabin. These aircraft are commonly used by Air Canada on their long-haul routes from Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal to various destinations in Europe, Asia, and South America, but they also reposition on domestic routes like Toronto to Montreal. Arriving at Montreal Trudeau Airport at 12.45 p.m., Air Canada check-in for domestic and international flights as it counters 1 through 114, near the first two doors of the departures level. Most of the check-in area consists of self-serve machines and an automated baggage drop system, but there are priority check-in counters along the wall towards security screening, which I have access to on a business class ticket. The priority check-in is open to travelers in Signature, Business, Premium Economy, or Premium Rouge, to travelers with Aeroplan 25k status or higher, or to those traveling on a Latitude Economy fare. After only a 3 minute wait to see an agent, I was able to have my bags weighed and checked in, and was handed my boarding pass for today's flight. With a business class ticket, you receive two complimentary checked bags, each weighing 32 kilograms or 70 pounds. Check baggage also receives a Star Alliance priority sticker for expedited handling. After dropping my bags, I'm off to security screening. From the priority check encounters, it's only a short walk to the entrance of the priority security line, which I have access to on a business class ticket. The whole security screening process from entering the line to exiting screening took less than 5 minutes, and it's now 1pm. Taking a look first at the flight information board, our scheduled departure time is 3pm, with boarding due to commence at 2.15, so we've got just over an hour to spend in the lounge. On a domestic business class ticket, I have access to the Air Canada Domestic Maple Leaf Lounge near gate A2. The lounge is open to Air Canada Elite status members with 35k status or higher, along with Star Alliance Gold members and those travelling in Signature, Business, or Premium Rouge. As for the lounge itself, there's a large area of seating near the windows overlooking the apron, with lounger chairs and also some high table seating with power outlets for working. In terms of food and drink offering, there's a self-serve counter with some snack items as well as a fridge of soft drinks, juices, and water, and a lounge attendant serving complimentary alcohol as well. During the COVID-19 pandemic, QR codes were added to the side tables at every seat in the lounge to access the menu for ordering hot food items. I ordered a spring roll served with plum sauce on a bed of arugula with some cherry tomatoes, but there were other options like pastas and soups available as well. In the summer of 2022, Air Canada removed these QR codes and reverted back to the buffet-style hot food offerings. It's 2pm now and my flight is due to board in 15 minutes, so I've packed up my things and am making my way down to the gate. My flight's departing from gate A50 today, which is back over towards the exit of security screening and is less than a 5 minute walk from the lounge. Catching a glimpse of the aircraft taking me to Toronto today, I'll be on board this 14 year old Boeing 777-300ER that was delivered new to Air Canada in April 2008 and has flown with the airline continuously since. Air Canada operates a fleet of 18 777-300ERs, which is the longer variant of the Boeing 777 family. My aircraft today is in a 3-class configuration, with 40 lie-flat pod-style seats in business class in a 1-2-1 configuration, 24 extra reclining seats in premium economy in a 2-4-2 seating configuration, and 336 standard economy class seats in a 3-4-3 seating configuration, totaling 400 seats on board. They also have a higher density configuration of this aircraft, which has fewer business class seats and more economy seats, with a total of 450 seats on board. It's 2.10pm now, and boarding is getting underway here at gate A50, about 5 minutes ahead of schedule. Air Canada boards their aircraft by zone number, with zone 1 for business class and aeroplan super elite members, zone 2 for premium economy and all other aeroplan elite status members, and zones 3 and up for economy passengers without status. Stepping on board, on this aircraft the business class cabin is split into two sections, with each containing the same style of seat. Rows 1 through 7 are in the larger section at the front, consisting of 26 seats, while rows 8 through 11 are in the smaller section just behind the midsection entry door, consisting of 14 seats. 
All the seats are arranged in a one-to-one -one configuration, with each pod facing away from the aisle. This makes them super private as the seats across the aisle are facing away from you. The pods in the middle have a retractable divider which can be adjusted for added privacy. First impressions on the cabin overall, I love the business class product on all of Air Canada's widebody aircraft. The seats are very modern and clean looking with textured hard plastic surfaces and metal finishing around the edges. Each seat can go into a fully flat position which we'll check out later on and is equipped with a large entertainment screen and lots of storage space. I'm booked in seat 9K for this flight, which is a window seat on the right side of the aircraft in the first row of the second business class cabin. Pointing towards the window, the footwell of this seat is shielded by the wall in front of it. Overall, it's very private, though one of the cons of sitting in the rear business class section is that all economy and premium economy passengers walk past you while boarding. In terms of baggage storage, there's tons of space in the large overhead bins, and also space under the seat near the footrest, though I opted to put everything in the overhead bins so I had more space to stretch out. The legroom in the seat is quite impressive, and at 5'10", I'm still unable to reach the footrest when the seat is in the upright position. Taking a look at the seat itself, the surface is a fabric material, and overall it's quite firm, though there's definitely more padding than the seats back in economy. Looking around the seat a bit more, on the right side we have a large ledge next to the windows, with a compartment hidden underneath. In this compartment, there's a remote control for the entertainment system, along with a headphone port for connecting to the system audio, and a USB 3.0 port and AC power outlet for charging your devices. The remote control pops out for use and is tethered to a cord. On the right side of the seat, we also have buttons for the seat recline position and this small touchscreen to control different functions of the seat. From this screen, you can control the lighting in the seat, request service from the cabin crew, and adjust various seat comfort settings. Looking first at the lighting menu, we can control the lighting in the seat footwell near the footrest, as well as the lighting on the overhead panel. In the comfort section, you can adjust the massage function, lumbar support, or firmness of the mattress pad. In the service section, you can display messages for the crew as well as call an attendant. And finally, in the control section, you can adjust the recline position of the seat and put the seat into fully flat mode. The tray table at this seat is stowed underneath the entertainment screen, and there's a latch on the underside of the table that allows you to pull it out and slide it along its mounting rails. When extended, the table is very sturdy, and also folds out to double the size, giving you tons of surface area. There are a couple different latch positions that you can lock the table at, depending on how far away you want it to be from you. Looking at the space under the entertainment screen and tray table where your legs go, on the right side there's a two-tiered pocket with the provided reading material stored in one tier, and space for a laptop perhaps in the other tier. Taking a look at what's provided, we have the safety information card for the Boeing 777-300ER, along with a couple air sickness bags. On the left side of the seat, there's a leather padded armrest that rises up at the push of a button, but is supposed to be stowed during takeoff and landing. Tucked on the outside edge of the seat, under this armrest is a small cubby for storing things, but once again, not during takeoff or landing. This storage spot is also very exposed to the aisle, so I can't imagine using it for anything other than garbage. On the wall in front of my seat, there's a small notch to hang your coat, and for the other pods in the cabin, the coat hook is located on the top of the pod sidewall. Taking a closer look at the lighting above the seat and controlling it from the screen on the side ledge, there are three different settings depending on whether you want to have either light on or both lights on at the same time. Also on the overhead panel, we have two personal adjustable air conditioning vents. On the right side wall of the seat, there's also a small reading light that pops out for use. Taking a look at the entertainment screen next, we'll start by using the remote. They very thoughtfully designed cutouts in the side ledge such that the remote cord feeds through it while you have the compartment closed. The remote is touchscreen controlled, with buttons on the left and right sides of the screen to toggle different functions like system volume, overhead seat lighting, and the attendant call button, along with navigation buttons. The remote screen is essentially a miniature version of the larger entertainment screen. Getting into the system, we'll start with a look at the on-demand content available. 
The system is loaded with movies, TV shows, music, audiobooks, podcasts, and games, with a good range of content available under each section. In general, the remote touchscreen is very quick to respond and easy to use. The entertainment screen itself is also a touchscreen and can be controlled that way as well. Continuing our tour, you can view the food and drink options available on today's flight, and there's also a kids section with on-demand movies, TV shows, and music targeted to kids. There's a section in the system with different city guides to prepare for your destination, as well as sections with information about Air Canada, their partners, and their frequent flyer program, Aeroplan. From the top right corner of the screen, you can control the overhead reading light and call an attendant, and there's a settings menu where you can control the screen brightness and system volume, as well as other functions like system language, night mode, and parental control. You're also able to turn off the screen here or set a screen status message to display. Provided at the seat when we boarded the aircraft, we had a water bottle and a Clean Care Plus kit, and shortly before departure, the crew handed out complimentary earbuds to all business class passengers. Taking a look at the Clean Care Plus kit, Air Canada distributes these kits to all passengers as a part of their commitment to passenger safety during the pandemic. Opening it up to see what's inside, we have some individual packets of hand sanitizer, packets of disinfecting hand wipes, and a multi-layer disposable face mask. With the seat tour pretty much complete, let's take a look at the view out the window from seat 9K. The seat has access to two full windows, giving you great views of the engine and wing of this Boeing 777. With about four minutes to go before our scheduled departure time, the flight deck informed us that they're just finishing up loading some extra fuel, and then we'll be ready to go. We began our pushback from the gate just five minutes behind schedule, ready to get on our way to Toronto. the engines up and running, and the safety demonstration underway, we're now taxiing over to the de-icing facility to clean off the wings before our departure. With the de-icing done and setting us back about 10 more minutes, we're now on our way over to runway 06 right for takeoff.
After a roaring departure with those loud GE90 engines, we're climbing our way up through the clouds and turning west towards Toronto. The windows on the Boeing 777 are a good size, giving you great views of what's below. They're also equipped with standard pull-down window shades for blocking out light when it's a little too bright outside. The one feature of the entertainment system that we didn't take a look at on the ground was the in-flight maps, so let's check them out now. On the bottom edge of the entertainment screen, there's a progress bar showing the progress in today's flight. From this bar, you can open up the in-flight maps by selecting the airplane icon. When opening the maps, you have the option of viewing them either on the main screen in full screen or picture in picture mode, or in full screen on the remote. Once in the maps, there are tons of different viewing options and flight information to look at, and the graphics quality is quite good. There's even a way to control the maps on the main screen using the remote as a touchpad, which is pretty cool. About 15 minutes after departure, the cabin crew began the in-flight service, offering beverages including complimentary alcohol and a snack tray of cold cuts and cheeses. The meats and cheeses were also served with a pickle, cherry tomatoes and onion, some seed mustard to accompany, some crackers to serve them on, and a packet of roasted salted almonds. The tray was also provided with a cloth napkin and metal cutlery. Overall, I don't love cold cuts so this didn't really do it for me, but the cheeses were tasty. With my snack tray cleared away, we have about 30 minutes left before landing in Toronto. I'm continually impressed with how private these pod seats are, as I can't see anyone else from my sitting position. This is also one of the main benefits of what's known as the reverse herringbone configuration, where all seats face away from the aisles. The other major pro is that every seat has direct aisle access. After taking in the views of the 777's massive GE90 engines, I'm up and heading to the restroom. This aircraft is equipped with 10 restrooms, with three of those reserved for business class passengers. There's one restroom at the front of the aircraft near the cockpit, and two restrooms near the galley that separates the two sections of business class. I'm in one of the mid-section restrooms on the right side of the aircraft, which isn't huge, but has enough space to turn around, and feels quite open thanks to the natural light from the window. Back at my seat, let's take a look at the recline capabilities. Operating it from the side panel button, you can see how the legrest extends upwards and slides under the entertainment screen, while the seat back simultaneously slides downwards. In full flat position, I'm finally able to reach the footrest. It's pretty impressive in lie flat mode, and on longer flights, a full set of bedding would be provided as well. Time to return the seat to sitting position as the cabin crew is beginning to prepare for arrival with 20 minutes to go. Our approach to Pearson this afternoon is taking us to the north side of the airport followed by a long left turn to line up for our approach to runway 05. After touching down at 4.37 p.m., we're now taxiing over to the gate on the domestic section of the airport's Terminal 1.
thanks for joining me for this trip and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Now for some comments on the experience overall, the business class cabin on this version of Air Canada's Boeing 777-300ER is the largest business class cabin that they offer across any of their fleet, being split into two sections and totaling 40 lie-flat pod seats. These seats are comfortable, private, and decked out with the latest entertainment systems and connectivity options to keep you occupied for hours, whether sitting back and relaxing with a movie or getting some work done in peace. Though the food provided on this flight wasn't anything special, I'd love to see what the offering is on a longer journey in this seat and really take advantage of the comforts that these pods have to offer.